Sup Shredders, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to an SP Patrons video today that I'm making for Paul7931 as part of their custom monthly music review. And if we switch over to here, we have ourselves the track on the screen. It is Suzy Shu and the Paramecia, titled Naive Tones if I haven't missed, uh, mistranslated that by D Bell. We're going to listen through this track from start to finish and we're going to hear what we think. Let's go. Gorgeous with the guitar pages. And woodwind's too nice. And strings filling out the stereo field. The vocals are incredibly expressive, aren't they? Oh, never mind, sorry. Sometimes YouTube does that when, like, you load a track and then you come back to it a few hours later. I was expecting it to get bigger than that there. You could hear the doof 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 crescendo for them to kind of playfully stay down that load of mid range is actually a unique take. There's all this lovely organ in the background go whoa, 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 kind of vibrating, oscillating there, and amongst everything else. There'd be a half dozen different instrumentalists playing different parts at this point. It's quite busy, but it works. The trumpets are a nice, nice little bit of extra input there on the, on the high end. Oh, bit of buzz to the, the brass there, the trumpets. Mm. There's like a consistency. Sorry if people are kind of vibing with it, kind of building there. There's a consistency with it dynamically. I'm not sure if that's a thing in regards to the the way it was produced. 
or just generally the sort of like just the way things were played there there's not as much of a difference as i was expecting between a lot of quiet parts in this part this should i think it should hit harder than it does I am wondering if this has um, been re-uploaded a few times. change? A little bit of falsetto there to sweeten things up. See, this is nice where it comes down a little bit. How many different instruments did we have in this, though? That a trump at the end there, brass, the wow was so uh was so scenic it kind of reminds me of a lot of the kind of music from like south america the the, blah, 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 the kind of bombastic trumpet stuff there where they're kind of very peppy with the triplet grooves i think it's a well-written song it's very busy we do have lyrics kind of like provided by paul to check through in a moment so we'll do that and then we'll sort of talk about uh, this track more in the conclusion so we've got the lyrics here for Su Zi Shu and the Paramecia for with the track Naive, Naive Tones. Apparently this is poetry. It does kind of read like poetry. Heart cannot be found. Love has no sound. At days early break with fresh wounds and feelings. As red is to me and green is to you and blue is to witness the heaven. Shallow wine is stronger and the long brewing is every minute, every second, every flash of eternity. Is a heart cannot be found. Love has no sound. Is it suggesting that there was, there was love but it was silent and things were kind of subtle? Green is to you and blue is to witness the heaven. I'm not sure if that's specifically related to like royalty or like the color green being jealousy and red is, is, is passion or it could be like sort of like a part place that they were from. Chill all wine is stronger in the long brewing is every minute. So basically it doesn't matter how you feel. It's going to be it's a similar sort of intensity regardless. The handcuffs restrained within bound. Good morning salute to the axe raised and put down. Mm. We applaud the beauty of scars upon each other before parting ways with no signs. Oh, okay. So is this a talking about potentially the way that feelings affect people? You don't see actual physical kind of issues, but like it affects them sort of psychologically. Is that it? Watching the blue lantern drifting out of sight. How to give it the light. How to hold it tight. Only by soaking the feet stay with no fright. Mmm. The nigh tune, taint and saint. Look at the fruits of the cliff edge, signing alluring. I think I kind of get it, but we're going to talk about that more in the conclusion. And welcome to the conclusion, my review of this track from an act named Su Zi Shu in the Paramecia, titled Naive Tones. Now, what is this track about? I think it's about people sort of like, you talk about how love is quiet and it has no sound. And we talk about the invisible scars that people have upon each other. And we talk about you know being restrained by it and good morning sort of like happily saying hello to the pain we're in and how we sort of applaud the fact that we feel these scars even though like 
we show no signs of them, etc. I think that maybe it's like a cautionary tale to people to be aware and careful of love and to not take it for granted. In addition to that, to simply just kind of appreciate that people go through pain even though they don't show it. You know the line, lovers don't you blink when turning back on the parting road, your gaze always be lost in the dark so cold. It's almost like we should be make sure that if we do decide to leave we should never second guess it because we will just continue to regret it i think basically it's about the pain that love causes how it affects people on like an obvious and not so obvious one almost like the pain is as bad as kind of being executed and then we talk about like how to give it the light how to hold it tight only you know by so can the feet stay with no fright so, so for me, that interpretation is basically saying, you know, how can we possibly have this without completely smothering it? And the line, look at the fruits on the cliff edge, shining, alluring, what is worth wasting such good times? It, it's basically saying that it is worth going near the edge of the cliff in order to feel something, I suppose. That's, that's the attraction there, the great risk of love in the first place. So any of the sentences I had, if you put them together, I'm not really sure how to give an overall summary of it because it is incredibly intricate poetry and I'm not entirely sure um, how far I am off, but hopefully that does make some sense. If I look at the vocals and how they were told, the guy who was singing kind of sounded like I would imagine like a bard or like a live performer in a classical setting would sound, like he was telling a cautionary tale or something like that, but he was doing it in a very charismatic, invigorating way. It was done in a sort of a situation where you just didn't really want to stop listening to them as they either sort of like spoke their verses or sang their verses in a wide range of different notes, you know. We didn't have a huge amount of, well, we did have a huge amount of variety. It was almost sort of like through composed this track. We didn't sit with one idea to uh, exertion. It was more simply a case where I think we wanted the song to follow the music in the other and there's this interesting Ouroboros of composition there. We had solid vocal technique there with our head and chest was tight and we also had some interesting falsetto passages as well which is kind of dope i think in addition to that what i appreciated was the fact that if we had harmonies they were more sort of like uh supportive of the rest of the elements as opposed to trying to sort of take further notice for the singer it was to kind of blend more into the ether rather than trying to sort of take you away from the rest yeah, I think the singer had insulted themselves really well. They were interesting to listen to, and I think they suited the overall vibe of the track, because it's 6 minutes 20, that is a long song. Now, I hesitate to give an overarching concept of what it is. It kind of reminded me, honestly, a little bit of songs like Stairway to Heaven from, like, the 19... 70s like very early night i'm pretty sure that still to heaven is 1970s just with the use of the flutes the kind of guitars the interesting sort of drum patterns there except to be we, we didn't really elevate beyond kind of a cautionary sort of driven guitar bass drum trumpet sort of like woodwind set up there there were clear differences between the two but that's the but that's what the track remind kind of remind me still even a little bit and uh, at least the first half of it the latter half there wasn't there wasn't more heaviness to it. I, I there wasn't a sweet. There was a sweetness to this track with some of the concepts, like how the, the the trumpets and the woodwinds integrated together, or how the guitar, bass, and drums kind of flew together as well. I, I think that ultimately the instrumentalists performed quite well. I don't think there was a note out of place. It was a very raw, organic performance. There, you could tell they were playing together in a live setting, and it was not filtered, and it was meant to represent their artistic endeavor. And I think they nailed that. Usually when tracks are four minutes or, or over, you really need to pull out the stops to keep them interesting and, and entertaining. And I think that they managed to do that here, even if I didn't understand what they were singing about or what they were speaking about. I kind of got the feeling from the way that the lead, the front person kind of uh, sort of spoke their truth and communicated that there was something special going on. And so I was more than willing, not just because of the way it was sung, but also to listen through that entire set because not only did it have a kind of like a bell curve going, like starting kind of slow and then rising up the middle and kind of fading out near the end, but the interesting sort of like ghostly, almost phantom-like build there that I didn't see coming. It was like the root music slowly started to kind of en encapsulate you inside the headphones without any blunt, uh, blunt lifts or anything like that. And I think that if I talk about a few of the key sort of uh, instruments I appreciated, because I, I hesitate to say that there were any sort of like sort of stereotypical solo instruments or anything like that. 
I think the guitar lines, the varying takes we had at the start were fantastic, how we had them on different sides of the stereo field as well as in the center there. We had different takes in different parts of the fretboard uh, with slightly different tone settings as well to help differentiate them. It was never too heavy or sort of like um, in your face, which I think is fine because I don't think that we would have sort of suited a gentish kind of proggy or even a new metal kind of vibe with those guitars. I think that the way that we had the arpeggios and some of the finger picks patterns and such and the steel strings as well as the hollow body electrics or something like that i think they were a great combination there it sounded very kind of earthy or organic and it suited the bass well as well when that came in i think that the bass had a great presence in the lounge but it was never too much it was very subtle a lot of these instruments in this track were subtle which is why i kind of got caught off guard by how kind of relatively quiet the end was because things just came up so sneakily the drums when they came in there was this like build part where like it just didn't kind of continue to rise there it kind of came down like there was a small little climax without getting what we wanted and i kind of wonder if that's kind of represented by what they're talking about in the track when when in lyrics when they say out on the cliff edge she still sings the nighty tune uh saint and taint, taint and saint i'm wondering if if that is the forbidden love there that's the dream that you can't get to or you can't encompass without going through tremendous risk if, if that's kind of what we're alluding to, that we continue to move towards something without being able to get there, I think that's a really fascinating songwriting decision. We were competent on the kit, as well as the guitar and the bass there. I really appreciate the woodwinds though. They were some of my favorites. They were really sweet in their mid to high range. They are a nice softness and it was really soothing and it was a great timbral kind of contrast to some of the guitar parts, even though they weren't necessarily harsh or brittle. Positions themselves neatly within the, uh, the chord progressions and bass lines and uh, articulated nicely in that upper register. And when the brass came in later on with a bit more force occasionally, but only just kind of sugarcoating it in, in a way that's not like, I, I don't mean that in a bad way, I think it just made it sound really pretty when the brass came with a bit of kind of forcefulness occasionally, they kind of gave it a bit more oomph that I think it desperately needed and just to kind of re have changes in the perceived intensity of it. I think that we kept things relatively minimalist with those trumpets, whatever kind of like instrument they were representing because we didn't want to overwhelm what was already quite a busy track. We had so many other instrumental layers in there. I hesitate to say we had an organ as well. There was a bit of vibrato there, a bit of kind of wobbly stuff going on in the low end as a sub layer, which I think was kind of neat. And, um, you know, like that, that was great as kind of a way to sort of articulate notes of the triads or whatever. Um, we had different chord progressions throughout. We didn't just sit with one idea. We had... You know, we had things develop throughout and it was like, we just found a million and one ways to sort of like, I don't suppose we didn't want to sort of artificially inject kind of peaks and troughs into it. So I think what we wanted to accomplish was to just change little bits that we were playing on existing instruments or add new ones in and just kind of, I suppose, like affect it like that. If I was to talk about the theme, given the way the instruments were played there. I, I suppose the theme almost is sort of fanciful or fantasy-ish where like we're kind of describing a story, we're being storytellers and we're trying to, to describe a mythical situation where we didn't try to be, want to become too dark with it, but there's a real sense of not necessarily sadness, but trepidation associated with it. But, but a lot of, much more of this track is center around some of its gentle sort of like voicings and you get the impression as well it wasn't trying to be too harsh with you it was more of a cautionary tale i think rather than a kind of slap in the face get your head out of the kind of like clouds kind of thing and i like that we didn't overcomplicate the sequences and and sort of ideas within it we had a lot of different instrumental layers as i mentioned but they they never sort of like became too much if anything, I think part of the reason why I've said that this didn't have enough sort of dynamic range, it seemed like it was, it'd been re-uploaded a few times and the difference between the lows and quiets has kind of been scuffed. But I get the impression that if this was in its sort of like original format or its mix master, it'll be pretty on point. It sounds like it's been really well recorded, which of course brings us to the studio recording mixing and mastering, which I think was splendid. It's really uh, fantastic to hear it. I like the way that the vocals sounded. They well, again, I've said raw and organic and such. They didn't sound over-processed or over-filtered or anything like that. They didn't try to sort of make it sound a certain way. It was a guy 
just speaking or singing through a mic and I really enjoy that. I think that the drums, the guitar, bass, the woodwinds as well as the brass and everything else that was included in there had a place where it just sat naturally because of the way the song was written. Things were stacked nicely in the Freaksy Spectrum, placed nicely in the stereo field. There was great use of panning of various instruments on the left and the right. As we came into the piece, we didn't just sort of fill everything up. We took our time decorating and hanging up little ornaments around the place in the stereo field with the, with the two sides of the cans. I think that makes it more interesting to listen to and it shows the listener very early on that it's worth the wait to listen through the whole thing because by virtue of the studio stuff alone being on point there, there is sound design involved, further thought than simply just capturing a great performance. There's further dedication into that. It was, you know, again, I'm not necessarily happy with the dynamic range of this current version, but I think the original might have had more, so I'm not going to worry about that. I think it was still nice and loud with the pumps, the bus compression limiting was handled, but I mean, effectively, this is my review of this track from an act named uh, Suzy Shu and the Paramecia Total Naive Tones, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show us some love via their various social medias, and I suppose this will be on YouTube or digital stream platforms, and stay cool and stay safe, and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time, as I need the help more than ever thought of crazy stuff going on in the world, and I'll catch you in the next SC Patrons video. Spider hands up.